Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Amy Chicken from Team Pandori. And this is my A500 Mini. It looks beautiful, but how can we improve it? Here's a package from Retro32, and we got bits of blue and white. Can you guess what it is yet? Well, you may have guessed right. These are mini floppy disks. It will do nothing more than change the aesthetics of this mini computer. Oh my god, look at this! It's amazing! Thank you, Carl. These are great. Let's get the bag open, see what else is in here. Mm -hmm. oh, you, oh my god! We'll keep that one for later. So these little pieces of plastic just pop in here. I think hers were probably plastic. And believe it or not, they are a very tight fit. That is because I have a large dome. Yeah, it won't fall out anytime soon. Let's check the other ones we have. The Team Pandori. Another Pandori. But the beauty is, we can actually switch these labels. So in this other bag, we have some stickers. The first we'll use is the one that covers this. Now we can add a set of duck lips to our A500 Mini. It comes in a set of four, and it should cover this perfectly. And let's just pop it on here. That looks ace. Now for the other stickers. There's one for Chaos Engine, Monkey Island, um, that cutie from Cuphead, with something in a mouth, James Pond, Torrican 2, X Copy, Sensible World of Soccer, Octomed, Syndicate, Deluxe Paint 3, Cannon Fodder, Zenon 2, Megalast. So if these things don't quite tickle your fancy, Retro32 have a few more on their website. While these labels do look pretty cool, I thought we'd try making some of our own. We'll use Photoshop, but you can use Krita, and we'll make a new document with 31.5 millimeters width and 16.6 millimeters in height. With the resolution at 300, we can then push Create. This is the template we'll use, the exact size of one floppy disk label. We can now use the internet to try and find some disk scans. Hall of Light has many of these images, but for many full games, all of the text is printed onto the disk itself. The thing is, we have far more nostalgia for cover discs. On the archive, you can find the ADFs as well as the disk scans, or we could click images at the top, and there's a ton of stuff. Let's try and find an image we like from here. Ah, dope as four. That's dope as it has got to be something down here. Ah, Octomed 4. So we'll need to either download this image or make it as big as possible on our screen. Just open image as... There we go. So now that the image is quite large on our screen, we can either save the image and then import it, or we could use Greenshot. It's very similar to the Windows Snippet tool. I'll just capture region, then select the area we wish to take. Copy to clipboard. And now this area is in the computer's memory. We can go back to Photoshop, edit, then paste. We'll need to use the transform tool. It's in the edit, free transform, then adjust it to make it fit the box. Sometimes they'll need a slight rotation. So now we're happy with that. We need to select the correct layer. Then go to Select, All. And now go to Edit and Copy. So this label we're going to put onto a piece of A4. So go to File, then New, then A4. If you want to print out to a different size of paper, select that instead. Then hit Create. Go to Edit and paste. It's pretty ridiculous how small these are, so to make the most of our paper, we'll fill the sheet. Move the image to the top left, and with the Move tool selected, hold Alt and Shift, then drag down. Boom. Let's do a few more. Don't know if you remember this one. Classic.
Once we have the column of disc labels ready, click on the topmost layer, then scroll down to the bottom, hold Shift and then click. With the Move tool again, hold Alt and Shift, and then move them to the right. And eventually, we'll have a big sheet like this. How many of these did you have? Let's try printing. Our first test was on standard paper. It does look okay, except for some of the labels have been chopped off, mainly at the side and the top here. But the size is perfect. We bought two sets of sticker paper, one matte, one glossy, to check which one will be better with our labels. Our first attempt with the matte sticker paper ended up in disaster. On the second try, it worked fine. But it seems somewhat faded, similar to a printout on a standard piece of paper. The glossy paper looks amazing. The colors really do punch through. The blacks are much darker, and the shine is the candy on the cake. Here we have them side by side. Really is night and day. Snippy snip snip. As the labels are very small, scissors will suffice. And that's it. Our custom labels. They look simply brilliant. When I first got this cover disc, I bought the settlers full price, and shortly after, I had a 2 megabyte Amiga 500 Plus. I went with my family to Lytham, we went down to sports centers while my kingdom was thriving. It's remarkable how a simple cover disc can open floodgates to some great memories of our past. And this looks awesome. Which labels would you print out? Do you too have memories associated with them? If you do, let us know in the comments. And as a gift, we created a compilation of cover disc labels. The link is in the description down below. And if you appreciate this work, please give this video a quick share with your Amiga mates. As always, thank you to all of us on our Patreon. Now for some cover disc commentary. That Alien Walker disc was one of the first ones I ever had. And this Body Blows one, oh, this was so good. Body Blows was fun, but Tank Attack was the best. Relo Kick and Flashback. I needed Relo Kick for supercars, and Flashback was just supreme. Super Frog, I played this one more than the actual full game. And Amos, yeah, me and Dave made some great games with this. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like, and subscribe, and bell, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!